today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. The 23-foot Dorado project gets a custom T-top built by Birds All Marine Design. The top on the boat came out wonderful. We achieved a lot of different areas that Al was looking for. All in all, everything was very nice. Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte heads out with Rick Riles, owner of a young 27, to discuss how he customized the boat for multiple types of fishing. After spending a day on the water with Rick on his new young 27, I think he's really gonna enjoy this boat for a long time to come. And the 23-foot Dorado gets some much needed attention in the paint bay at MCU. And when we put some non-skid in the boat and we two-tone it, I think Al's wife's gonna get exactly what she's looking for, that new custom boat feel. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Last week I met a guy named Al Cowan. He brought a 23 Dorado into the shop that he wanted to get customized and renovated. We went over some things he had on his list. One of the main things he wanted to address was his dual station T-top. He wanted to get rid of it. He wanted to eliminate the second story on the top and he wanted a nice, simple, clean top with a lot of shade. I recommended he take the boat down to Birds All Marine, meet Bobby, and go over all of his options. <coughs> I had the pleasure of meeting Al. Uh, he showed up at Bird's Halls uh, recently and we went over some stuff on his uh, 23 Dorado. He had had the boat since it was original and wanted to do some considerable changes. Um, didn't want the hassle of the folding deck tower anymore. Wanted just to make it easy to trailer and launch the boat. Was interested in making sure that the, he had plenty of sun coverage. There was some criteria with the console being um, having to open up uh, to get to the rigging, uh, which had a few challenging points for Burtsall. The existing deck tower that he had was, was kind of just built around the console, sort of in the aisle way, if you will. So we wanted to try to get the leg assembly tighter to the console. And we were able to come up with uh, a few good ideas for Al on that. After um, listening to Al and taking in consideration all of his um, different characteristics and needs that he was looking for in his new build, we went back to the drawing board and came up with some great ideas for Al. In Al's build, um, you know, what we do is we, we fabricate a blueprint of the top section and uh, somebody will fabricate the sunshade, as, as we call it. Um, at that point, all the dimensions are taken, the top section's done, uh, it's mostly welded out. The camas guy comes down usually and fits the camas at that point. The Weblon that was that Al picked is a duplex color. It's uh, usually a lighter color on the top. His was ivory with sand. And what's nice about it is the Weblon can be wiped off. It's a vinyl style material and it doesn't leak water. In the fabrication of Al's top, uh, when we were tacking the new T-top up in the boat, uh, you could see from the old leg assembly that was removed from the deck tower, you could see how much wider the foot placement was versus the new design trying to bring the legs in and make them compact so he was able to walk around a little freer in the boat. The leaning post also uh, was very similar. There was a particular area where the, where the deck had some hatches, so the leaning post had to actually come down and mount on an existing area on the deck, so uh, the leg assembly was actually a little bit narrower at the bottom than it was at the top to give him an adequate seat width, uh, also housing the bait well. Also in the fabrication of Al's top, um, the console opened up for rigging, and uh, one of the challenges was um, being able to uh, open the console, but yet the T-top has to be rigid enough and be mounted to the console uh, so it, it's not rickety or, or shaky in any way. So we had what we would call struts coming off of the T-top going down to the console with uh, breakaway pins. What a breakaway pin is, is, is it's a type of um, machined item that allows it to break in half, uh, removing two bolts out of each pin. And uh, that allowed 
the T-top to be securely mounted to the console uh, when the bolts were tightened up. Uh, however, when you wanted to rig the console, you would undo the bolts and the console is, was hinged in a particular area would allow that console to continue to open up so uh, any rigging or any wiring that needed to be checked or done w would be able to be you know, serviced at that time. The whole item at that point is welded out. Uh, the canvas guy um, obviously finishes his canvas. The welder finishes welding the whole top and then the rigger would get the top at that point and he would machine the top and pull all the tin wire through the framework and then uh, the canvas would be laced on. We want to make the canvas tight. We want to keep it uh, the same reveal all the way around the frame. Once that's done, the lighting will be installed and, and hooked up. And then after that point, that top's ready to go on the boat. The top on the boat came out wonderful. We achieved a lot of different areas that Al was looking for. All in all, everything was very nice. I think he'll be extremely happy. So Al brought the 23 Dorado back up to Stewart. After he got done talking to Bobby at Bird's All Marine and going over all the options for his top, we're going to be able to start to peel this boat apart and actually dig into this project. When we return, FS Boating editor George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Rick Riles aboard his custom-built Young 27 in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by All Grip. Let your imagination run wild. All Grip is the premier yacht coating that delivers the distinctive, high-gloss, long-lasting finish for pleasure boats big and small. Make your boat look beautiful while protecting it against the elements with an endless possibility of color choices. Let your imagination run wild. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. This week we check in with my good friend Rick Riles. Now Rick has got a lifetime of boating experience and he's been through many boats, inshore boats, offshore boats, big boats, small boats. At this point in his life, Rick decided he'd like to have the last boat he was ever going to own. He needed a boat that was both inshore friendly and offshore friendly and he found the perfect fit in this young 27. Okay Rick, let me share with the folks at home here a little bit about your background here. We all know you've been there, done that, you're the old seaman of uh, Jacksonville here. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a history of running big boats here now. Okay, I wanna, I'm trying to get it while you landed on this boat. First off, now I have grandkids that all want to go fishing. Sure. Okay, you and I know the fuel bills that, that we paid on big boats. Oh, yeah. Holy smokes, I can't go fishing on 300 gallons a day anymore. Okay, I'm taking my grandkids. I had to have something I could take them. I still wanted that feeling of being out here. You know, you and I are hooked on being out here. We oh, can't yeah. do anything else, but I couldn't afford the boat to do it with. So we toned everything down a little bit. I tell you what, I may have the only boat you ever saw uh, with 24 foot carbon fiber outriggers and a trolling motor. <laughs> that is a bit of an oddity. I will agree with you there. Well, but for a purpose. Yeah, absolutely One of the other things for a that purpose. you really love to do with your, with your boat is what? Your bottom fish. Oh boy. Picture sneaking up on that wreck in 300 feet of water and not having to worry about anchoring. Just pushing that button. But we had to have enough boat. Grandma doesn't want to come out here in a bay boat when it's rough. Okay. Of and the, the kids aren't, there's so many of them now, so many grandkids now, we can't put them in a small bay boat. All these things had to come together, okay, for me to decide on what I think. For, it, this is my dream boat. This is the last boat I'll ever run. This boat is kind of like bay boat characteristics in an offshore boat. Absolutely. I can trailer it with a standard 1500 truck. Perfect. I'm only maintaining one engine, okay? Big, yes perfect. Yesterday I fished all day on 30 gallons, all right? And I've got a gorgeous spread. I've got a 60-foot spread out of baits that looks just like they did behind your old Cabo. You can't convince me 
that pulling a 60 foot wide spread through the water isn't better than pulling a 23 foot wide spread through Absolutely. the water. You know what, there's no law that says you have to use them either. Right. One of the neat things that you can do in a bay boat, okay, is live chum. That's what I mean by it. You pull up on a wreck, you drop that spot lock trolling motor, all right? You dump out live baits, and then you've got your hook base. Across my transom, I've got a hook bait well, I've got a chum bait well, and then I've got something that you and I couldn't live without, our chilled bait trays. Oh, nice. That we can lay ballyhoo in, all ready to go with circle hooks. We can just drop them in the water. I can go from, from trout fishing to sailfish fishing with less effort than you can imagine. You're trying to actually have many different boats. You've got a boat that wears a lot of hats here. There's gonna be a certain amount of features that you need in a boat to accomplish all these tasks. You know, to make it a bay boat, to make it an inshore boat, you might run the beach in cobia fish. You might go off and spot lock it on a wreck. You might go sail fishing or marlin fishing. Tell me some of the features about this boat that you put into this rig that make it that boat right here. What are we looking at? I'm sitting on one. Okay. okay. Uh, you got to admit, this is a pretty plush helm for a center console yeah, boat. Very nice. Underneath it are not only tackle trays, tackle drawers, leader holders, everything I need because I may troll all day and I get a bite. We've both seen me do that. <laughs> Today so, might be that day. So I got to stop and catch bottom fish on the way home. I can store 24 rods. Okay. I can carry everything I need to make one trip work. Where's I your, had to be able to do that. Where's your rod storage at? I've got rod storage under here. Under the I've gun. got rod storage alongside the console. Okay. I've got rod yeah. storage up in the tower. Oh, yeah. I got rod storage on the transom. Actually, yeah. We got rod storage. What I hear again, back in the old days on the big boats, we always had everything we needed. I've got to try and duplicate that now in a 27 foot boat. That rod's not going to do you any good back in the garage. The number one thing that I think I miss from our big boat days was being on the bridge. Oh yeah, I mean, a whole it's a, different world. Isn't there. it a whole different world? Yeah. And is there anything like looking down on your baits and seeing that big purple shadow come up and start chasing them you around? You can see everything up there. Yeah, you really can. So we put a tower on this boat, but I wanted everything I've got down here up there. So I put a your smaller- electronics. Right, all my electronics. My autopilot can be run up there. Everything can be run up there. Buddy, I can prop up there on a sunny day, okay, with a cold drink, and I can look down on my baits, and it ain't a 35 Cabo, but it's close, brother, I'm telling you. And if there's no perfect boat, let's not kid each other, but it's it's what's perfect for you that counts. This isn't every man's dream boat, but I can promise you this is my, it's this is one, one man's, man's dream, dream boat. boat. I'm looking at him. <laughs> you can count on that. I'm a happy man. Now, unlike the rest of the boats that you've seen on this year's One Man's Dream Boat segments, Rick started with a brand new boat. He really needed a boat that he could take his grandkids out back in the river, go in the ocean. I mean, he needed a multi-purpose boat. After spending a day on the water with Rick on his new Young 27, I think he's really gonna enjoy this boat for a long time to come. When we return, Brian at MCU takes delivery of a large pontoon boat that is in need of a shallow water anchor. This segment brought to you by Marine Customs Unlimited. You dream it, we build it. Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the crew at MCU installs a power pole on a sandbar battle wagon, an Avalon pontoon boat. I had a local boat dealer stop by the shop today. They've actually got a really large pontoon boat that they wanted to install a power pole on for their customer. And you guys think power pole and you're thinking bass boats, flats boats. You know, the guys drop the pole, they fish a little bit, they raise the pole, they're on their way. This is actually an awesome idea and a really cool feature for a pontoon boat. Typically, you pull a pontoon boat right at the sandbar and the two sponsons just ride right up into the sand. Now you've got to monkey around with an aft stern anchor. It's kind of a pain in the butt, especially if the current's ripping. Now these people are going to be able just to press a button, drop this anchor down, and lock the boat in place. 
I love this idea. This is going to be awesome. This power pole's 10 feet long. They're going to be able to pull up to the sandbar, whether it's shallow or deep draft, and they're going to be able to drop this pole and lock this boat right into place. I'm going to get Steve on this installation, and we're going to bang this thing out pretty quick. This pontoon boat just came in. We're going to be putting a power pole on it. It's actually the first time I get to put a power pole on a pontoon boat, so I'm kind of curious how it's going to fit. After checking out all the stuff that was delivered for this installation, I see that the power pole makes it a nice little bracket just for pontoon boats, and I go, wow, okay, that's pretty cool. Determining the best location for a power pole on the back of the boat, you got to look for structures in the back. Well, I've got a ladder on the starboard side, so there's no way it's going to go there. I've got plenty of room over there on the port side, but he does have a seat pedestal there, so I got to get it far enough away from that pedestal to where he can still put his seat in and still have plenty of room between the engine and the power pole for when you turn the engine. I had plenty of room back there, so it was not hard to determine the spot. So I get the bracket up in place where I'm going to put it. I uh, mark it, I uh, drill, screw bolt it, and it went on real easy, real cool bracket. Now I'm just going to mount the uh, power pole itself to the bracket. I get that up there mounted. Pretty quick installation. Now I've got to run my hydraulic hoses, and uh, fortunately, for me, on the back of this pontoon boat, it had a nice little rig compartment back there that already had the power steering pump in, and the power pole pump was going to fit perfectly in there, so I didn't have to cut no holes anywhere. I ran through the existing rigging grommet that they had for the engine rigging, went right in, and uh, had plenty of room to mount the pump in there, so you get two pumps in there, you open it up, great access to the fill, so this is going to be the best spot for it. It was pretty cool, you know, in the little compartment back there. They've already they had some studs back there that had battery cables running to. Made this job a lot quicker because if I'd have had to run uh, some wiring all the way to the batteries where they have them in this boat, it would have been a nightmare because uh, running rigging in pontoon boats, especially when they have the aluminum underneath, like on this one, it'd have been a nightmare. It would have taken me a couple of hours just to get power back to uh, the power pole. The hoses come marked for you. They tell you which is the up, which is the down. Usually the up, they have a little blue cap on it. Then you look at the pump, it's got a little blue cap and you just put the blue cap to the blue cap, tighten it up and uh, you can't really mess it up. So that's why it's important to uh, read your instructions before you even start the job. All in all, this was a quick, fast installation. Normally it'd take me on a fiberglass boat anywhere, you know, normally around a half a day to do the job, you know, to make it look good and do it right. Uh, this one here just took me about an hour and a half to do so. It's real easy, thank God for that compartment back there. That's what made it easier, having the power back there, having the room for my pump, and I've already had access to run my hydraulic line, so this, this job was real easy. All right, so Steve wrapped up that power pole install on the pontoon boat pretty quick, just as I thought. Now those people can get out to the sandbar and start enjoying that thing. When we come back, Brian meets the 23-foot Dorado owner, Al Cowan, to discuss the budget and finer details of the restoration. This segment brought to you by Armstrong Nautical Products, celebrating 25 years of creativity and innovation. Do you have the Armstrong advantage? In its most basic form, an Armstrong outboard bracket improves the efficiency of your outboard motor. This equates to a faster time to plane and higher top speeds. The list of advantages continue with improved maneuverability, added space, and a quieter ride. Adding a swim platform accompanied by an Armstrong boarding ladder will certainly add to your day out on the water. Isn't it time for you to gain the Armstrong advantage? Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as Brian meets the 23-foot Dorado owner, Al Cowan, to discuss the budget and finer details of the restoration. I had Al come back to the shop today, all the way from the West Coast, to specifically go over this list that he had and his budget. There were some things on there that weren't working out in terms of getting over the budget. He actually brought the boss this time, his wife. So now I know we're going to have to actually stay within these parameters because this is getting serious. But I really feel good about this. Al and his wife are actually going to go over these options I've given them. They're going to pick out what they want to do. They're going to let me know what's going to fit within their budget and I can actually get started on this boat and get it rolling. You did exactly what I asked you to do, which is put down everything we can think of and come up with a budget. And so that's kind of where we're at. Now in reviewing that budget and bumping it against the other work we're having done with the top, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got to try to find some ways to save, save a few bucks. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I mean, the other thing we could consider is, is wrapping the boat instead of painting it. You know, at least on from the chine line up yep. and doing a wrap on the boat. Um, that, we that, could do that. that. We could figure that out square footage wise, but I, you're probably going to be close to half of what that is. Okay. All right. So one of Val's ideas of saving money on this project is actually going with a wrap versus the paint job. That's not really the direction I'd like to go. I'm more of a get some paint on the boat and have it last a real long time. But there's definitely a cost savings. And this isn't my boat. This is Al's boat. So I'm okay with it either way we go. It's really up to Al and it's his decision. Now the closest thing that I would see on my side, the gel coat repairs, they're, they're a little more entailed than the right. $1,500. Now, if you're like, well, we don't need to get that detailed on it, Brian, then yeah, there's definitely some money in that paint okay. work that can come out okay. of there. Okay, all right. Um, but that's gonna be really up to you. I see them as problems and issues. Like when we walk around that tow rail or when mm -hmm. you're trying to get a new boat, a new look feel, mm -hmm. to cut out a couple of grand where the paint, that's like some of the, uh. the biggest eye-catching stuff there is. You know what I mean? Now there's areas we're gonna be able to buff out on the boat and make it look really nice. In some areas, I think they just need to be painted, like the console and the seat. They're gonna really set the boat off. And when we put some non-skid in the boat and we two-tone it, I think Al's wife's gonna get exactly what she's looking for, that new custom boat feel. So now that we've got all that figured out, I'm gonna get this boat over to the body shop, we're gonna get it painted. We have the 23 Dorado in the spray booth now. We had to do a couple of gel coat repairs on some of the cracks, some of the older holes. They're going with a little different style hard top on it. We're gonna go ahead and do a wrap on the outside. So we're just gonna buff out the inside to the best that we can. And then we're gonna go ahead and do some non-skid on it. The non-skid on this boat is pretty much non-existing. Over the time, it just wears out and it, the only way to fix it is just to respray the whole thing. On this non-skid job in particular, it's a nice cream colored boat. So we're gonna do a nice two-tone browner color to really make the non-skid pop on this boat. On an older boat like this, this is really gonna help in two ways. It's gonna make it look like a brand new boat. On top of the fact, it's gonna be a lot safer. You're not gonna be slipping and sliding all over the boat. Now it's all done, really looking at the non-skid and that two-tone effect that we have in there really makes the boat pop. When they were done, Bertzels was done, we received the boat back at the facility and um, installed the, the new T-top on the newly painted vessel, um, through bolt and everything, uh, 5200 and wiring up the lights uh, to make a really nice package for the customer. All right, so we got the 23 Dorado back from Bird's All. The T-top looks awesome. I'm super excited. I'm envisioning these black acrylic dash panels on this nice painted console. I can't wait to get Steve and Dave in this thing and start getting it rigged. Next week on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. The 23-foot Dorado moves into the rigging bay at MCU for some performance upgrades. Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte meets with Kent Hughes, owner of a 30-foot Dorado, to discuss his unique build. And back at MCU, the 23-foot Dorado project takes on a new form, nearing completion for owner Al Cowan. The filming of Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat has been shot on location at Marine Customs Unlimited. You dream it. We build it.